thank you for this opportunity. At first, I will talk about uh, definitions of anti-Semitism, and then I will talk about the problematic of whiteness. So uh, how are we to make the connection between anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism? How can this connection be made apparent? Of course, the main point of contention between the IRA definition and the Jerusalem Declaration on Antisemitism is that this letter casts doubt on the relationship between the critique of Israel and Zionism on the one hand and antisemitism on the other. The JDA wants to keep these two separate from each other, which is expressed in the oft-repeated formula according to which antisemitism would be hostility, discrimination against Jews as Jews. This semantic criterion would enable people to clearly distinguish statements that are deemed anti-Semitic from those deemed just anti-Zionist. And of course, one of the main problems with the JDA uh, that it is based on a very superficial analytical philosophy of language, and this idea uh, needs to be developed at a different occasion. Uh, sometimes the delimitation from the IRA definition has the vocation to reach a conceptual level when it is said, like in a recent paper by Peter Ulrich, that the concept of Israel-related anti-Semitism is susceptible to become too indirect, abstract and generalized, expanded or metaphorized. In contrast to the substantial concept of anti-Semitism, supposedly used by the Jerusalem Declaration, thereby losing empirical relevance. And Ulrich continues, and I quote, the object of anti-Semitic enemy image is Israel, irrespective of whether it is conceptualized as specifically Jewish. But hostility towards or distance from Jews' Jewishness is not a necessary semantic element here, end of quote. Without accepting the JDA semantic criterion for a statement to be anti-Semitic, I would like to argue that it is possible to establish a direct, non-metaphorical, non-metonymical relationship between anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism which does highlight hostility against Jews as Jews. I believe that a direct relationship may be established between the criticism of Israel and anti-Semitism by examining the critic of Jews in contemporary Western societies. Therefore, although the JDA criterion for a statement to be anti-Semitic is not necessary, since much too restrictive, it can still be satisfied. And I'm I'm making here a, a charitable interpretation of the JDA, like if it was uh, ex expressing a logical point. Uh, so, um, what are the ways of establishing empirical or concept conceptual linkages between anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism in an indirect fashion, which are put into doubt and treated as metaphorical by the JDA? For example, in prejudice research, it has been proven that there is significant linkage between those statements that the JDA would like to salvage as non-antisemitic, such as Israel treats the Palestinians and as Nazis treated the Jews, and other obvious antisemitic statements. This means that statements and views constitute a system in individuals and groups while examining them uh, in a decontextualized way doesn't give the full picture of the views. Another method is conceptual parallels. As it is well expressed by Alan Johnson, the editor of Fedham Journal, and I quote, anti-Semitic anti-Zionism bends the meaning of Israel and Zionism out of shape until both become fit receptacles for the tropes, images, and ideas of classical anti-Semitism. In short, that which demonological Jew once was, demonological Israel now is uniquely malevolent, full of bloodlust, all controlling, always acting in bad faith, the obstacle to a better, purer, more spiritual world, deserving of punishment and so on, end of quote. Therefore, we could conclude that anti-Zionist statements are often anti-Semitic because they target Jews through Israel. The proof for this being precisely the exaggerated nature of the attacks recourse to double standards and demonization, or simply because uh, the statements are false. Therefore, anti-Zionism uh, would stem from anti-Semitic motives. 
According to the Jerusalem Declaration, there is nothing to highlight here. Even if those statements are linked in the cognitive makeup of an individual or are false, or again, resemble old anti-Semitic tropes, they are not anti-Semitic, or not necessarily so, because they are not about Jews as Jews, but about Israelis and Zionism. Whereas those parallelisms may be accidental and do not express a necessary linkage between anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism. Now I would like to inquire into how Jews are perceived in some contemporary critical discourses in Western societies in order to find a direct relationship between the newly emerging Jewish question in the Western world and anti-Zionist accusations. I think that one of the key elements of this relationship is the labeling of Jews as white. The same hostility against Jews construed as whites by an act of transposition appear equally in anti-Zionist discourse. I believe that discourse on, discourse on whiteness in general and the targeting of Jews as whites in particular can be considered in part a symptom of the contemporary crisis of critical theory. In fact, as the conceptual foundations of social critique receded, the radicality of its claims has intensified. The single most visible symptoms of this dialectic of disorientation and enhanced radicalism are those disciplines which belong to what some scholars call the new academy, essentially constituted by studies which justifiably or not place themselves in the wake of post-colonial theory. One important sign of this crisis is a kind of metacritical urge to preserve, in spite of all, critique as it used to be, regardless of empirical findings and of socio-historical change. This tendency may result first in conceptual radicality, which may appear in the form of fixed explanatory models and categories, for example, in the entrenched binary oppositions, black and white, dominant and dominated, settler, indigenous, etc., or in the form of critical concepts stripped from their interpretive value, when once critical analytic categories become purely critical like white in the framework of critical whiteness studies or critical race theory. Second, it may emerge as conspiratorial explanations to which, by its anti-hegemonical thrust and some methodological suppositions, some trends of social theory are already prone. But uh, now I will only mention conceptual radicality um, and um, the, the question of conspiracy theories linked to some trends in social theory need, needs to be developed another time. It's also very important. In fact, uh, radical critique often appears in the form of essentialized categories and also what Robert Fine and Philip Spencer named methodological dualism. Or, as the French sociologist Luc Boletansky similarly wrote, I quote, critical theories of domination posit the existence of profound enduring asymmetries, which, while assuming different forms in different contexts, are constantly duplicated to the point of colonizing reality as a whole." End of quote. While the categories of critique are increasingly dichotomous in their nature, native or settler colonialist, indigenous, or member of the dominant white class, uh, peculiarities, ambivalences, contradictions, and ambiguities are overlooked. How does this uh, affect uh, Jews? As Glenn's cousin and Robert Fine wrote, I quote, within the dichotomous categories of critique, both as minority and as majority, Jews appear on the side of the oppressors rather than the oppressed. When binary terms of race and color are applied in the discourse of domination and privilege, Jews are placed on the white side, and anti-Semitism is removed from the list of current racisms. <clears throat> so there's certainly an epistemological problem in critical theory besides the political one. For example, in the framework of critical whiteness studies, it is asserted that Jews are white in spite of their former status as an ethnic and religious minority, and their European history of extreme persecution culminating in the Shoah. The label of white is not only meant to express that Jews are not victims of racism, or at least systemic racism anymore. 
as they are not discriminated against on ethnic or religious grounds, or that they have reached a high level of assimilation in the host societies, but also that they enjoy white privilege, and that in many instances are even active in maintaining systemic racism directed against people of color. For sure, whiteness is understood in a critical mode. First, in the reversal of the evaluation of processes of acculturation and social mobility, henceforth regarded as negative phenomena. And second, in the presentation of majority, white society is essentially racist. According to the historian Moshe Rosman, these re-evaluations re have the consequence that, I quote, multiculturalist critiques consistently speak about Jews, Judaism, and Jewishness as conservative, even reactionary and oppressive, aligned with the established powers of hegemony that seek to exclude and disempower people of color and other minorities. True, the novelty of critical race theory and critical whiteness studies, those increasingly popular disciplines, has been to treat whiteness as a historical concept, striving to de-essentialize de it, while seemingly distancing it from its perceptual meaning as skin color. Thus, people, groups, can in fact become white, whiteness being something that can be achieved through a historical process of acculturation assimilation, qualified and interpreted by the methods of social history. Whiteness was meant to be the end, end point of an empirically discovered historical process when after World War II, for example, discrimination against Jews and anti-Semitism has gradually subsided in the United States. However, it has to be noted that the concept of whiteness is equivocal. In fact, its multiple and contradictory meanings always come to the fore in this framework in which Jews are seen as becoming white in this socioeconomic sense, along with the supposition that they have always been white from the beginning in a racial sense regarding skin color. That is to say, there is an inherent tension between two conceptions of whiteness. It can be perceived as either the result of assimilation or an innate reality of skin color. While critical whiteness studies purports to privilege the former, it often draws on the suppositions of the latter. The circularity of the argument describing Jews as white due to these multiple and never clarified meanings is obvious, such as in Karen Brodkin's pioneering book on Jewish whiteness, How Jews Became White Folks. The qualification of white applied to, to Jews omnipresent also in academia seems to hark back to some pre-social scientific critical agendas, such as 19th century anti-Semitic critiques of malignant modernity and profiteering mentality. With Jewish emancipation acquired, criticism was formulated later on in terms of unmerited Jewish advantages or Jewish overrepresentation often turning into accusations of Jews subduing parts or the whole of majority society, still having repercussions in today's conspiracy theories. <clears throat> uh, as Jonathan Judakin put it, jo Jews no longer represented atavism and backwardness. They were now also tagged as the vanguard of corrosive modernity. How does the critique of why Jews relate to these old tropes? How is Jewish prominence, exceptionality, domination reinterpreted in contemporary criticism? By the enumeration of such privileges as the position of Jews in the class structure, the lack of discrimination targeting them, contrary to other visible minorities, the allegedly waning anti-Semitism in the Western world, and even the unduly received enhanced protection from state authorities, well expressed by the notion of state philosemitism, especially widespread in France. How do the Jewish word and white qualifier interact? The concept of whiteness colonizes the Jew and thereby automatically triggers criticism concerning the latter, while under the heading of the critique of power and domination, makes it transfigure 
into a seemingly non-antisemitic designation. And when the seemingly progressive critique of power and anti-Jewish stereotypes intersect, the Jew will stand for all those assigned characteristics that we know from the history of antisemitism. <clears throat> so there are two moments in this. Uh, Jews are erased as a minority, and uh, the critique is formulated in antisemitic stereotypes. For all these reasons, it seems that Jewishness operates as an accelerator of whiteness, putting Jews even further away from the minorities comprised in critical race and intersectional theories. Jews intersecting with whiteness enhances the perception of them being dominators as the dominant face of Jewishness will come to the fore, which is necessarily linked to antisemitic imagery. As the German researcher Ingo Elbe has put it, I quote, the anti-racist theorizing of antisemitism can thus easily fit into the classic anti-Jewish stereotypes of privileged Jews and resentment against them. End of quote. I would say that Jewishness even represents a form of reverse intersectionality. That is, the combination of dominant positions all appropriated by white Jews. Jews accumulate all features of domination, whereas of course intersectional theory is built on the accumulation of stru structural disadvantages that link together different uh, groups. The tropes of white Jews is also becoming significant for an additional reasons. <clears throat> it not only designates privileged position in the structure of inequalities, for example, a high socioeconomic status in Western societies and the aliens with majority and power, but also the colonial nature of Israel, a country founded by Europeans, whites in the Middle East, and its supposedly exceptional status epitomized by so-called impunity on the world stage. These two intertwined meanings, either by explicit linkages or implicit associations, convey the image of global privilege and dominance. A large part of academic writing on Israel has taken up the vocation of proving that Zionism is a white settler movement resulting first in a colonial and now in an apartheid state. As the eminent racism scholar David Theo Goldberg put it, Israelis, as Western imperialists, I quote, occupy the structural position of whiteness in the Middle East, end of quote. Goldberg states that Jews have become white as a result of their treatment of the Palestinians who, in this imagery, occupy the position of blacks. This means that the Jewish name is totally eclipsed by the white designator why Palestinians will appear as blacks. Canadian racism scholar Abigail Bakan goes even further than Goldberg, constructing a link between Jews becoming white in the United States. As she puts it, I quote, Jewish Zionist hegemony, uh, she puts it as Jewish Zionist hegemony, uh, and she goes on to say, I argue that a transnational historical turning point occurred after World War II, marking the ascendance of Zionism to a position of hegemony, coinciding with changes in the class and racial configuration of Jewishness. And she goes on to talk about the close association of Zionism with Jewish whiteness in the United States. The tagging of Jews as white in contemporary social theory I just conclude with this. Um, it's key to understanding why so much critical attention is directed nowadays towards Israel and Zionism. For critique is far from being addressed only to Israel as such, as it is always, at least tacitly, construed in conjunction with the critique of Jews. Israel is a symbol of domination and privilege, far removed from its complicated history and position in the Middle East, but that Israel is singled out and that anti-Zionism has become an enormously popular critical idiom, encompassing or symbolizing now what is everywhere formulated as social and political critique, is largely due to the fact that Jews are perceived as white, also and especially in social theory that legitimizes this view. The critique of Israel is nourished by the critique of Jews as white and vice versa. Therefore, it is not the case that anti-Zionism is just anti-Semitism in a different guise expressed by conceptual parallels or the projection of anti-Semitic sentiments onto Israel. There is no disguise here and no need for one as the criticism targeting Jews as white is plain and openly professed. That is to say, the connection between the critique of Jews and that of Israel is not metonymical or metaphorical but conceptual, operating in a vocabulary of social critique. 
being based on the qualification of whiteness and on the Jewish question it raises. Thank you.